Hi, hello, um, so I'm just going to be doing a quick tutorial on how I made my shoes um, inspired by Barbie and the Tall Dancing Princesses. Um, so these were super fun to make. I made them when I made my dress because I cannot resist kind of making a matching pair. Um, so this is kind of what they look like. Um, these are just kind of for display. So I hang them in my on my wall. Um, you can kind of just have fun with them. I use kind of what supplies I had around. So I'll kind of talk you through how I made them. But I first started off with a cheap pair of polite shoes from Amazon. I think they're about 15, 20 pounds. Um, that I kind of just got any old one because I knew I wasn't going to be wearing them so it didn't really matter um, how good a quality they were. Um, so yes, so I will start the tutorial, talk you through how I did each step and then you can make your own. Um, so let's go! Okie dokie, so the first step is painting your shoes. So it'll depend on which sister you picked. Since I picked Genevieve, I'm using two tones of pink. I bought these point shoes cheap off Amazon just because I'm not planning on dancing in them, they're just for display, so it did not really matter what they were like. First step is to prep them. So I cut off the ribbons because I will be using a different colour next, and I quickly covered them in a clear um, primer. I'm using spray paint to paint the shoes, so I sprayed them in a spray primer, but it'll depend on what paint medium you're using. If you're using a paint, you could try Mod Podge or something. Then I just went into spraying. I shoved some tissue paper inside them just to make sure the insides didn't get covered in paint. But I started off with this ni nice kind of pale peachy pink colour, which I thought was really pretty and matched her shoes really well. The next step is the fact that she has the contrast colour toes. So these are definitely a dark colour and I wanted a really clear line. So in order to get that line, I used, well I used cellar tape because I didn't have any masking tape, but masking tape, tape is better. So I just placed it over a line where I wanted made sure it joined at the back and then covered the rest of the shoe up from where I wanted it to be painted to make sure that the paint didn't get on any of the other nice pink bits. As you can see here I was just covering the toes making sure everything was in the right places and then I went into spraying in the dark pink. Uh, be very careful not to go over the line whether you're painting, spraying, whatever just because otherwise you won't get that really nice clean line they have in their shoes. Then all you have to do is wait for your medium to dry. So make sure your shoes are completely dry before you start the next steps. Otherwise the paint might run. Okay, so the next step is the fun part, adding the details. So these shoes have so many details which make them iconic. So I had a look through my trim boxes and I found this really cool gold trim, which I've had for a while, which I use on quite a few dresses. Also these fake 3D paper flowers and some lace trims kind of had a little bit of a search. You've not done anything fancy, uh, you can just kind of have a look and see what you can find. Um, I did not end up finding a white ribbon I liked to make the quilting effect, so I found this gold ribbon which when I painted it white it gave like a really nice shimmer. So that's what I ended up doing in order to get the quilting effect because I really wanted it to be visible on the shoes. I had to wait a little while for this to dry. Again, make sure everything is completely dry before you start combining otherwise things will rub. So, the next step was attaching everything. So in general for these shoes, the attachment method I used was hot glue. It dries quickly and it's stable and I was not planning on wearing these so it did not matter whether or not they were durable enough to dance in. Um, so I went around the shoe with my hot glue gun, measured kind of by eye because I thought it was easier and it's harder to measure on the curve and got my little squares. Um, I had to go back in with the paint again because I miscalculated how much gold trim I needed. Um, so I just used the plain white acrylic paint and painted over this little gold trim and then touched up any of the little bits of white that smudged or weren't quite as visible. And as you can see, I got a really nice quilted effect. There I am struggling to hold the shoe up to the camera. I'm sorry about that. I was still working out how on earth it worked. There's Erica in the background when I was working on my Princess and the Pauper dress. So once I finished up touching up all the white stripes, that is how they looked. So I got them done first because they were kind of the base for all of the detail to move around in and yay and did the other shoe yes make sure always do the other shoe so the next step was adding the gold band which covers the join between the two colors so for this i just used the same gold ribbon i painted white for the quilting but just left it gold because it's quite a nice thickness and it covers the join without being too thick but it's up to you if you want something really big and shiny absolutely go for it um so i just went around again made sure to cover all the little if there was any gaps and that is what i ended up with Next up came the gold trim around the edge of the shoe. So I tried a few different things to see how, how they would look, but I ended up with this gold jewel trim. 
it's really pretty and it has like a gorgeous sparkle to it and it has that kind of crimped edge that it does in the actual film so as you can see it looked really pretty um, and it's kind of the right thickness because you can still see the pink then I used some extra satin that I had left over from Genevieve's actual dress, so I used this for the sleeves and the bodice so it would match in colour to make the little bows. This was super simple, I just took a little square and folded it both ways and crimped it in the middle and you end up with a bow. I also used a little bit of extra just to kind of cover the centre, but since I knew a flower was going in the middle anyway, I knew it did not really matter about covering the centre too much. And that is how I measured the bows. Equally, you can just buy a few bows um, in the right size, you don't have to make them, but since I made her dress, I knew I wanted to match the colours. Again, applied with hot glue, and then, my favourite part, the rhinestones. So, I always saw these as the sparkliest shoes ever, so I really wanted to add some extra rhinestones. So, in the little um, joins of the squares in the quilting on the shoe, I added these really pretty, like, pink rhinestones. They're not too big that they look um, overwhelming on the shoe but they add that extra bit of sparkle which I really liked and here we go so here is one of the shoes um, when you are doing a pair you do have to do both so here is the other oh sorry the lighting's a bit dodgy there um, well, the next step was then the final step in the end applying the ribbons so I found this really nice pink ribbon that I like the color of and it was the perfect thickness so I know a lot of the dancers in the comments were slating me for this, but I promise I'm not dancing them, they're just for display. So I hot glued the ribbons onto the inside just so it was kind of neat and finished. Um, measured out the lengths. I made them very long because in the film they are kind of very long and I wanted to hang them by the ribbons in my room. So I made sure to make them uh, quite a decent length. And you can always trim them at the end, but you cannot add more if you already added them, if that makes sense. So I just kind of folded over the edges, made sure there were no raw edges so nothing would fray and attached them at the same points on the shoe. I really enjoyed making these shoes. Um, they were a dream when I was a kid so having them kind of to display in my room and with my dress was <laughs> really lovely. And my favourite part, the final result. Making these were a lot of fun and it was a cute little side project when I made her dress and I'm really happy with how they came out. I hope you guys like them and I hope this tutorial kind of gives you an idea of how you can make your own. Um, here's a bit of a view of how they ended up looking. And these are the final results. So as you can see, you've got both shoes, you've got the little flower at the front, the gold trim, um, and yes. Um, so I had a lot of fun making these. I saw these a lot as a kid. So, um, actually having a pair was really fun. If only I did ballet, it would make it even more fun. <laughs> but for now, I'm quite happy to have them hanging on my wall. Um, so yes, so by all means, try and make your own. Again, these were for display, so please not try and dance them if you don't know what you're doing, because you might hurt yourself. Um, so yes, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys had a lot of fun, or kind of um, enjoyed watching and I hope you all have a great day. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like this I am making a tutorial for how I made the actual dress um, and I'm going to be making a short version as well so you guys can kind of see make a matching pair if you want. Um, so yes, so I hope you all have a great day. Uh, thank you so much. If you liked this please follow and thank you so much. Have a nice day.